Good evening, the state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Armenians who escaped the genocide in Western Armenia, Mihran Daba. The ring operation started on this day 30 days ago. Artsakh Foreign Ministry issued a statement on 30th anniversary of ring operation. Tulips created a visual feast in Mush. The economists called the military park in Baku horrible. Turkey's efforts to restore regional relations have faced widespread distrust. Artsakh to have 30 to 35 hectares of new forests. Mihran Dabag was born in 1944 in the city of Tigranagert, Western Armenia. Professor, director of the Faculty of History at the Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany, director of the Institute for Exile and Genocide Studies, Professor Dr. Dabag has written numerous books on violence, genocide and colonization. Here are some experts from an interview with Professor Dabag. Tigranagert was actually a very difficult place for us Armenians. Armenians and Assyrians took to the streets in fear. My father and I used to have different names inside and outside. My name was Orhan outside, Mihran at home. My father was Kemal outside, Garnik at home. Mihran Dabak never told his own testimony, the story of his family's genocide. His father survived the genocide and remained the only member of his family. And Mihran Dabak continues to live as the last bearer of this story. The full article is available on our website. On April 13, 1991, the second division of the Soviet 4th Army, stationed in Ganzak, besieged the villages of Getashen and Martunashen in the Kanlar region of the Azerbaijani SSR with the support of tanks, artillery and military aviation. Russian volunteers also took part in the operation. Hours later, the operation was followed by the entry of Azeri volunteers of the Special Forces of the Ministry of Internal Affairs of Azerbaijan into the mentioned villages. Under the pretext of checking the passport regime, the Azeris forcibly deported the residents of Armenian-populated villages by helicopters to Stepanagert or Girovabad, and then to Armenia. Tatul Karpeyan, the head of the self-defense of the Getashen sub-region, Artur Karapetyan, Simon Achik Gyozyan, who took over the command of the Arabot detachment on April 19, and Heraj Danielian, the commander of the Herazdan detachment, were killed in an unequal battle. The actions took a week. More than a dozen civilians were shot and axed. About 100 Omo men were taken captive to Girovabad. According to witnesses, from the very first day of the operation, thousands of residents of the surrounding Azerbaijani villages rushed to Getashen and Martunashen, began to plunder the property of Armenians. Until today, the crimes and the atrocities in Getashen and Martunashen have not been properly assessed. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Artsakh has released a statement today on the occasion of the 30th anniversary of the Operation Galtso, the ministry told Armand Press. The statement says, 30 years ago, on April 30, 1991, the Azerbaijani authorities launched the Operation Galtso, which can rightfully be called one of the bloodiest and most inhuman operations on the deportation of peoples from their historical lands. As a result of the operation, in the course of which tanks, combat helicopters and artillery were employed against civilians for the first time, hundreds of Armenian villages in northern Artsakh, as well as Shahumyan, Hadrut and Shushi regions were devastated and destroyed. Tens of thousands of people were deported. Hundreds were killed and taken hostages. The fate of many of them remains unknown so far. The Operation Kaltso became yet another manifestation of Azerbaijan's genocidal policy and the continuation of a series of Armenian pogroms and ethnic cleansing committed in Sumgate, Beku, Girovabad and other Armenian-populated cities and regions of Azerbaijan, as well as in the settlements of the Nagorno-Karabakh Autonomous Region and Northern Artsakh in 1988-1991. The Operation Galtso led to the subsequent full-scale aggression of Azerbaijan against the Republic of Artsakh, which continues up today. The war crimes and cross violations of international humanitarian law committed by the Azerbaijani armed forces during the Operation Galtso, the four-day war in April 2016 and the 44-day war in the fall of 2020 imposed on Artsakh by Azerbaijan with the support of Turkey and the participation of mercenaries from various terrorist groups testified that indifference and impunity for crimes against humanity lead to their recurrence. The natural tulips growing in Mush, Western Armenia, which are considered endemic plants of Mush, have created an image that resembles a postcard. This year, the tulips opened prematurely, 
have painted the Moosh field with red. The tulip registered in 2015 under the name Moosh 1071 pleases the eye with its unique beauty, causing aesthetic pleasure. Tulips, whose lifespan is 50 to 20 days, are always in the center of attention. It is necessary to take steps so that the mush tulip contributes to the development of the mush economy to some extent. Tulip is the symbol of mush. There are endemic species of tulips everywhere, but the mush tulip has a unique feature. More seriously, it attracts both local and foreign tourists. The Economist newspaper reminded that more than a century ago, a genocide was committed against Armenians in the Ottoman Empire. And a few months ago, Turkey, the successor of the Ottoman Empire, helped Azerbaijan win the war against the Armenians. During the victory parade in Azerbaijan, Erdogan praised Enver Pasha, one of the architects of the genocide. Meanwhile, Aliyev recently opened the horrific military theme park, which displays the mannequins of wounded Armenian soldiers with crooked noses and grotesque faces, as well as the helmets of Armenians killed during the war. One can only guess how such a demonstration compares to Azerbaijan's peace proposals. Turkey's efforts to restore regional relations have faced widespread distrust, Gulf News reports. In recent months, Turkish officials have tried to ease tensions with a number of countries, including Egypt, Israel and Saudi Arabia. The Turkish attack with admiration is aimed at undermining regional initiatives against Ankara's increasingly aggressive stance in the Middle East and the Eastern Mediterranean. In February, Greece, Cyprus, Egypt, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates hosted the first meeting of the Philia Mediterranean Forum to which Turkey was not invited. Turkey has conflicts with EU member Greece and Cyprus over access to newly discovered hydrocarbon reserves along its maritime borders and in the eastern Mediterranean basin. At the same time, Turkey's military intervention in the Libyan conflict and support for the Muslim Brotherhood throughout the region has angered Egypt, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. A nursery of forestry species and 30 to 35 hectares of new forests will be created in Artsakh, the Armenian Minister of Environment Romanos Petrosyan told Armen Press. Petrosyan visited Artsakh recently and said that the result of agreements between the authorities of Artsakh and Armenia, the Hayanzar Governmental Forestry Organization has already launched the work for creating the nursery. The nursery will be a 500 square meter greenhouse. The new forest will be created as part of the 10 million trees agreement, with Hayanzar and its Artsakhi counterpart having reached an agreement on donating 100,000 trees. Hayanzar will hold training and consulting for its Artsakhi counterparts. The new forest is planned to be created in the Martaget region. Speaking about the initiative of releasing trout into the Sarsang Reservoir, Petrosyan says the goal is first of all within the framework of the restoration processes of Artsakh, as well as restoring the reserve of Sevan and the development of the trout population. Over 40,000 trout fish were released into the reservoir. Now I present you a song dedicated to Tatur Karpeyan by Kamsar Ensemble. Bats fetsar shalus An hus Sakalo Keta shenan ka The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.